Have you ever thought very much about that commonplace little word, like? Do you spend much time in the classroom teaching it? Like, how many different ways can you think of of using it? Do you see what I did there? There are actually quite a lot. I'm Joga Conga from ELTtraining.com and this is another video in my Grammar Quirk series. I'm not entirely sure that it's reasonable to call this a grammar quirk because it's really lexical, but it's an interesting language quirk, so I'm including it anyway. Like, of course, is a very common English word and it's probably one of the first ones that learners come up against when they start learning the language. I guess one of the earliest examples would usually be functional exponents of polite requests or offers. I'd like a coffee, please. What would you like? But of course, they would also use it as a verb to express enjoyment or approval. I like your honesty. To be honest, in these digital days, I suspect that probably the first example they might come across is in the social media sense. Will you like this video, for example? What else is quirky about like? Well, whether it's followed by a gerund or an infinitive, for example. With most verbs in English, this is pretty clear. They're either followed by one or the other, or if both, then there's a difference in meaning. But with like, arguably, there's not much difference in meaning and both are acceptable. It's argued that like to do something is often used for things which you think are a good idea rather than things that fill you with joy. I like to clean the toilet regularly, for example. But I can think of loads of examples where the two are almost interchangeable and the difference in meaning would be negligible. So that's pretty unusual. What else have we got? Well, it doesn't have to be a verb. Like can be a preposition, meaning similar to. And it's used in the very useful question, what's it like? You should definitely be teaching your learners this. Following on from that, we've also got the difference between what does she look like and what's she like? And the trickiness of dis differentiating those from what does she like, which is obviously very different. You can also see as a learner why it'd be really easy to make the mistake she's like tall, which is obviously not correct, when she's like her mother is perfectly fine. Then we've got another use of it, uses a suffix on the end of a noun to make an adjective. She's childlike, for example, and what's the difference between that and childish? And then finally, there are all those kind of spoken uses of like, which you probably don't teach in class, but maybe you should consider doing so. Like as a filler, in the same way that you might use um or er, uh, gives people time to think, and this might be really important for learners. It's also used to focus attention on what's coming next, particularly where those things are quantities or times. And then of course, you've got the idea of using it as a way to introduce reported speech. I often hear that this is what teenagers say, but I find myself saying it quite often too. So I think it's probably a bit more widespread than just in young people. So I was like, great idea. I'm gonna go find somebody, but I didn't have any gas money. Talking to people about it, uh, and everybody was like, yeah, that sounds really good, that's really exciting. And I think the biggest test that we did. So there it is, a brief overview of the many, of some of the very many uses of that innocuous little word, like. Which one will you teach in your class this week? I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, there are other grammar quirk type videos on my website. Bye bye.